Boxing King Media in association with Boxer. Delighted to have with me a uh, former world champion and a retired veteran from the sport of boxing, uh, Barry McGuigan. Barry, good to see you here today. Uh, firstly, how are you? I'm great, Razan. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm very healthy and fit, and it's a great occasion. 21st year, funny 21st year for young Adam Azim. It's amazing that he's done so much in such a little time and so uh, now that uh, um, we want to get it we want to keep the impetus, impetus going with him he need, needs to fight regularly he needs to be on TV and become the superstar that we believe that he will Shane's gone on record to say he's the naturally most gifted fighter that he's ever trained what's his potential Barry? how far can this kid go? you know this is it's a very difficult business boxing it's a very tough business but when you look for qualities and you look for hand speed and you look for punching power he's a really good looking kid he's very disciplined he's hard working um, they give him the potential to be exceptionally good but it's not that easy it's always difficult there's always a boulder that comes in your way there's always something that's going to um, try and trip you up but he has the potential to be a really sensational talent. He's got the height to go up in weight. Um, he's got in incredible explosiveness. He punches really hard. Um, and, you know, he's got, he had a few issues with his hands and so on. So we've got to take care of them and we've got to make sure that his, you know, they, they spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on wraps and, and bandages in, in the gym. So. We take great care in how we look after your hands, but when you punch as hard as Adam, um, there's all the, always the potential that you can stave and hurt your hands, and that means time out. So we want to keep the impetus going, we want to keep him busy, we want to keep him active, we want people to see him, because he really is a sensational talent. I, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw something on Twitter where he was ranked in the top 15, I believe it was WBA, I think. Just crack the WBA rankings, but we, we don't really care about that we, we we know and see having sort of Shane has trained seven world champions and he's only 34 years old we know the potential that Adam has and um, uh, he is he really is a sensational kid uh, Hassan is a tremendous talent as well and he's a great puncher and uh, he's learning not as skillful and, and as talented as his brother but he's a very good kid and a wonderful personality and they're a lovely family, so we, we, we're very much like the Irish families. The Pakistanis are like the Irish in the sense that we have big numbers in the families and, and we go on to have bigger numbers. And, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've really got a serious talent in this young man. Just uh, some of the other fighters in the gym, Chris Billum Smith, it looks like Lawrence Cody has activated his rematch clause. Did that surprise you or did that not surprise you? No, not really. Um, no surprises there. I mean, he wants to win back his title. Um, and he wants to he thinks that he can beat uh, Chris again it wasn't a very pretty fight to watch uh, that wasn't Chris's fault he tried very hard to make it an exciting fight uh, he dropped Lawrence and, um, his, and, and he beat him convincingly and he'll do it again next time um, well, so we're, we're getting ready for that and he's just gearing up for that so um, yeah lots of things happening Caroline's looking great um, you know, the, uh, Hassan and, and uh, Adam are looking great. Uh, Ellie's just won the world title at at, uh, at Super Bantamweight. She's looking about unifying and uh, possibly going up to featherweight as well. So lots of, of very exciting stuff going on. Very busy and uh, very eventful. When I spoke to Chris Billum Smith in Bournemouth, he said to me that he wants to avenge that loss to Richard Riapo. We know Richard was mandated for Opataya. Opataya has now. Uh, joined and is co-promoted by Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, so that becomes uh, uh, an interesting scenario as well. But is that the ultimate goal as well for, for Chris Billum to, to unify the division? I think we, we are having, we're just taking one step at a time. The rematch is obviously the thing that we're focusing on. Um, but yes, the, the bottom line is we would like to get, uh, he would like to get revenge over uh, Richard Riakpour. Riakpour is looking like he wants to fight for I think he wants to fight for the WBC title. Whether he'll get that shot against Bad Badu Jack or not is another thing. 
be great for a unified title. But, um, you know, Richard Breach put a good fight of a lot of respect for him. He can really punch. Uh, and uh, we 100% believe that, that Chris Billings will beat him in a rematch. A fighter that left your gym, um, I spoke to Shane about it just a few moments ago in, in detail, so I won't go into detail, but with Daniel Dubois now joining forces with Don Charles, what do you think Don Charles can add to his game in such a small amount of time for the fight of Daniel's life? I, to be honest, I, I, I don't know that in that space of time he can make a real difference. Um, uh, it, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a political issue, it's a family politics that I can't really discuss uh, and maybe it'd be better to speak to Caroline about that but um, yeah we're, disapp we we're disappointed to see Daniel going um, you know I, what I can say is that he's a tremendously hard puncher um, you know you would think that Usyk would have the edge over him uh, when it would come to the betting on the fight but he's, a, he's the sort of kid that given the chance if he gets a chance to hit Usyk on the chin squarely he can knock anybody out he's got that much power so he, he has undoubtedly got a chance but Usyk would be a strong favourite in that fight uh, obviously we know there's a packed schedule of boxing coming up Errol Spence Terence Crawford for next week and then we go straight into the heavyweights I just want to get your thoughts on recently didn't mention, well, you didn't mention Stephen Fulton and Inouye on Tuesday that's an amazing fight and Inouye's won the light flyweight super flyweight um, undisputed bantamweight title and now fights um, Stephen Fulton out in Japan on Tuesday afternoon for the super bantamweight uh, WBO and WBC title so it's an amazing fight and um, so I wrote about that in my Daily Mirror column today so it'll be in tomorrow's uh, paper don't forget and buy that boxing fans <laughs> no absolutely uh, yeah, um, but that, that's a great fight and of course Errol Spence and um, Terence Crawford is a fantastic fight and it, I, you know, I hope the heavyweights will learn from their brothers in the weight, lighter weight divisions. We want to see the best fighting the best. So, for God's sake, get your finger out and start doing it. You know. Barry, did you see Anthony Joshua's comments that he made about Ron McCracken? I didn't. What was that? He said the following, and I quote the actual thing he said. He said, "Ron McCracken's a really good coach. The only thing I'd say is look at Carl Froch's nose. He just didn't teach me defense. Rob was too committed to the Olympic team, not pros." I gave Rob my best years. Now I've got to dig deep to get them back. Well, that's uh, not very nice. Um, uh, however, uh, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be drawn on that, and I really don't want to comment on it. That's, that's a discussion and a dispute between the two of them, and that's, uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nice when you see two guys falling out and, and spitting flames at each other but I don't want to get involved in that discussion Barry you know we always welcome uh, more finances in the sport of boxing fighters get paid more uh, fighters obviously are prize fighters they want to earn maximum capacity Saudi Arabia are not just throwing money in boxing but in a lot of sports in football and golf and tennis can you understand Harsh and Fury's reasons to fight Francis Ngannou um I, I, to be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed with him fighting uh, Francis Ngannou or whatever his name is, but it really is it's time wasting. They, him and, and Usyk should have had uh, had the fight by now. They should have organised, even if it were to take place in six months' time. Uh, that would have been ideal. That's what I wanted to see. I, you know, at the end of the day. The shop window for, for our sport are the heavyweights, and we want to see them all fighting each other to find out who's the best. You know, we need that for our sport. We need to see the best fighting the best. You know, Inu, we talked about Inouye and, and, and uh, uh, Stephen Fulton doing it. We talked about uh, Errol Spence and uh, Terence Crawford, and we, we really need the heavyweights to sort it out too. Obviously, that's gone past the situation now, and now Dubois fights um, Usyk instead and uh, you know I don't know anything about Fra Francis in whatever his name is I know nothing about him but uh, I really am disappointed and uh, annoyed that he you know that that the Fury didn't fight Usyk and get that fight over the line and, and have one champion but um, there we go it's it's you know it, we are losing 
boxing fans all the time to UFC. We can't. It annoys me because we can't keep allowing this to happen. The boxers have got to fight each other. The best guys have got to fight each other, and we have to have good examples in the sport. And uh, we get good examples by the best fighting the best. And it's that's enough about it. But it's frustrating. Uh, Shane McGregor made some comments. Your son, um, when Josh Taylor and beat uh, Jack Cattrall, uh, probably two years ago now, nearly. He, um, I think more than anything else, Shane was just upset of where Josh had what he had become after what Shane built with him over those years. He goes to America, takes on Teofimo Lopez, and he loses. Um, just kind of your reaction to his loss, and do you think it's time for him to move up? Is 147 his division? No, he's, he's not big enough for, for welterweight. We just talked with the two best welterweights in the world, and you know he, he shouldn't be going anywhere near those guys. Um, you know, he still has a chance to, to, to win back um, the late welterweight uh, title, um, I suppose, if, if he can dedicate himself. But, I, you know, we all have a lifespan, we all have a shelf life, and I, I genuinely don't know that, that uh, I, or I believe that Josh's year, his best years are behind him. So I don't think, I don't believe that he can regain the late welterweight title. But... You know, it would like it would it'd be nice to see him try. Chris Eubank Jr. Liam Smith, the rematch is is on. Um, Chris Eubank Jr. now also working with David Hay. Uh, from what we were last told, can can he avenge that loss? Well, not by the way he was beaten in the last fight. Um, he was you know he was cut categorically destroyed. He was just broken up and, and knocked out. He looked vulnerable. He looked like he'd been down on the weight for too long. Um, it didn't look like he had really rehydrated um, uh, before the fight. It, it just looked like he wasn't strong. And, you know, the bottom line was Smith made him look like that. He made it, he made it look uh, easy. And I, I don't see there being an, a, a change in the result. It might take a bit longer this time, but ultimately Smith will win again. I picked Eubank the last time, but I didn't. I, I, I was in trepidation because I thought... You know, being down on that weight for so long, he looked he looked dry. He looked he looked um, he looked vulnerable. Put it that way. Uh, and you you know, I, as a fighter, can look at guys and know that they look really skinny and they're like right down on the weight. And he stayed there for too long. You know, there was the fight with Ben that fell through, and of course, he was talking about going down to 154. Can you imagine what he would have looked like at 154 uh, instead of 157? So, um. You know, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 160. Uh, so I, I, I genuinely don't, uh, I don't see, I don't see a change in the result this time. I, I would, uh, I would back Smith to win and win again impressively. He might take a bit longer, but I think he, he wins by stoppage. Uh, just final one for me, uh, Barry. In the 90s, you had Ricky Hatt and Nigel Ben, Chris Eubank Senior, Prince Nassim Hamid, and could, did you ever imagine that? The four that I've mentioned, they will have sons to go on and be professional fighters. I was with Prince Nassim last week at the Usyk Dubois Presser. Uh, he announced that his son is now making his professional debut on the undercard as well. So uh, it's quite crazy to think that, isn't it? Four legends and they, and they have sons that all go on to become professional fighters. Um, yeah, and, and it's inevitable that, you know, Eubank uh, produced uh, Christopher Jr. and Harlem. Um, and, of course, uh, Connor. Uh, uh, ben, uh, Nigel's son. Uh, so you know, it happens, and uh, I, it'll be interesting to see how the what's his name? Is it Adam or Adam? A Adam? Adam. Yeah, uh, Adam is uh, tall and skinny. It's a bit of a risk getting to 24 and not having had a any amateur fights, and then wanting to go and and, and turn pro. So I'm sure uh, Frank Warren will take him along carefully. But it'll be interesting. I, I, I'm fascinated to see. Just what he's capable of. Uh, what I'm, I, you know, I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing him in action. Barry, as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, I think the mains haven't come out yet, so you're okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I haven't missed anything. You haven't missed anything. I appreciate your time, and yeah, hopefully we'll catch up with you very soon. Take care, Razan. All right, Megan, thank you for speaking to Boxing King Media.